You see that blue pipe right there? That pipe took me the better part of an hour to an hour and a half to figure out what was wrong with this setup. And what is this even, you ask? Hello everybody, I'm Martin. Welcome to another episode of Static Industry. And the machine you just saw, that was some unfinished business from last episode where I realized I did not quite have everything I needed after I finished the steam quarry here. Because I realized I didn't have anything to process those ores into the raw ores or pulp them down into redstone or coal dust. So I made the large steam macerator, which you might think wouldn't need this large nest of pipes and hatches. In the bottom of this is all hatches. One of these is the fluid input for the steam, and the other one over here is the output hatch. But each of these hatches, if you look in the pipe filters, takes two items, as you see in the inputs here as well. And that's because the large steam macerator specifically requires eight items at a time. Now, thankfully, I have the steel item hatches available to me, which do have two slots open but this doesn't even start processing until it has eight of whatever item you have in here. And some of these items like the coal ore require being macerated twice because this makes the coal crushed dust, but we can't actually use this. We need to macerate it again into coal dust with a chance of extra, which is fine if you like a giant mass of pipes built into this thing. So one thing to know about why this blue pipe was so problematic for me, and that was because the outputs of the things we just mentioned, like the coal and the redstone, you know, these things right here, both have to be input and output into these hatches. So we have to be able to pull it out from this hatch, put it back in our system and put it back into here to reprocess it. However, I had them as all yellow pipes before and well, what happens if you jam yellow pipes in here? It just constantly feeds back into itself over and over and over and starts jamming things in and out of the drawers over and over. So segregating into its own separate pipe that strictly does output into the drawer controller fixed that. But thankfully all seven of those input hatches was able to handle the full load of getting all of this, plus some lead ore over there. In addition to this, I also built a simple vanilla sugar cane farm right here because we're going to need paper here shortly. Now, now, I should note, this is very, very, very slow. And if we need to speed this up in the future, while well, we can either expand it, or I can make a create sugar cane farm, or I can look into the modern industrialization way of farming, but we are quite a ways away from that yet. That's well into the electrical era. The last thing I've been doing is upgrading some of my random things like this steam boiler. And I was wrong in one of the earlier episodes when I said this only, the bronze ones only produce four EU. They actually supposedly produce eight, but the, the steel boilers produce 16. And and I've got a steel water pump here, but it turns out that this produces well more than this boiler needs. And we can actually get by on the bronze water pumps because you notice this is staying mostly full. So thankfully it was only a little extra steel and I did some cleaning up back here as well and added a couple more machines and made an even bigger mess of pipes. But uh, as you can see by this purple pipe right here, I finally got the lubricant sorted out because now we have lubricant just being made. Although this right here, this was an accident with the pipes and I bumped some lubricant back in. But thankfully it works just fine with the creosote down here. We are however just completely full now which is a fairly decent place to be and while i'm back here i guess i should note something i haven't explicitly called out between this and the item pipes under the macerator it should be obvious that you can stack multiple of the same types of pipes in the same block just sort of like ender io conduits i'm not sure what the upper limit is i haven't tested it and i'm sure we'll find out later so what exactly are we going to try to do today take over the world <laughs> Okay, but more realistically, what we're going to try to do is get up to the basic machine hall so we can get out of the steam age. Ultimately, we're going to end up leaving a whole lot of unfinished check marks for now, but we're going to get up through this so we can get up to the electrical age over here. And to do that, we have a couple of things we need to do. Step one, the wire mill, which as you can see in the check mark, I already made. That doesn't, however, mean I actually set it up yet. But as you can see, it generally turns plates into wires and wires into other wires. It pretty much does exactly what it says on the box. We just need to go set it up so it does two types of copper wires for now. From there, we would need to have it create the LV cable. So I guess we need to go get this propped up, eh? Okay, that came up real fast. The answer is apparently three. I can't put more item pipes on that network right there. All right, so I've got this wire mill set up. I did make a second one that I'm not currently using. I just put an extender on to make the two types of copper wire. I probably am going to want both of them eventually, but as you can see, I am getting into 
dire amounts of space over here. I either need to expand it into the floor above or move down this hall. Either case, we'll be doing that in the near future, but I don't have that at setup right now. And, well, we're gonna need space in this hall for one of the later steps today. But now that we've got the wire mill, well, we just need to make some copper cable. And the copper cable, however, requires rubber sheets. And down the rabbit hole we go. Which starts over here with the raw synthetic oil bucket, which then leads to the synthetic oil bucket, which then leads into making the synthetic rubber bucket, which makes cheaper rubber. And then finally, we can make the rubber sheets. Now, I should note there is this ultimate way of getting rubber from rubber trees using Tech Reborn, but I think this is going to be faster just to do it the modern industrialization way, probably long term. So the first step, however, is making the raw synthetic oil, which requires water, which I'm unfortunately going to have to make a pump to get it here, which I've been trying to avoid doing, as well as carbon dust, which we don't have yet, or coke dust, which we do. From there, we're going to turn it into synthetic oil in a steam blast furnace, which I'm gonna put up right back here, right next to the other blast furnaces. And then the final step is making the synthetic rubber, which just requires adding sulfur dust, which we're getting from macerating up the lignite coal dust as a byproduct at present chance that we have hundreds of it. So there's no point in not doing this. So I guess let's get this chain set up, eh? All right, so now I've got the rubber production set up, although I have a problem and I'm kind of stumped right now. So we have water pump into mixer to create this the raw synthetic, which goes into the blast furnace here to make the normal synthetic oil, which gets dumped out of this hatch right here, goes into this steel mixer and it has to be a steel mixer to mix the synthetic oil with the sulfur to make the synthetic rubber. The problem is this pipe, even with the filter set to add sulfur, is not putting sulfur into this. And when we go over to this mixer, which is doing the synthetic rubber with paper, this one is also not adding paper in. And these pipes come down here to where this blast furnace doing the steel works fine, pulling the uncooked steel dust and the steel ingots in and out of this pipe properly. But for some reason, it can't find the sulfur dust or the paper. It can find the coke dust just fine and it can put the rubber sheets back just fine so frankly i'm a little stumped right now on this and i'm gonna have to noodle on to figuring out what's going on because these should work and i'm very baffled right now so i'm gonna manually make enough to just get this moving forward so we can complete this chapter the important part however is i manually bucketed out each of those to finish out these quests and now we have the rubber sheets done it also tells us we could make rubber armor which is mostly with the jetpack to stop us from dying but instead we can now move on and make the lv wires and this as i showed before is just wire with rubber sheath and well that's easy enough just to kick out all 12 that we need to finish that out now that brings us to the battery and this is where we have a problem because this is where we need the battery alloy to continue so here's the part where we start buying antimony ore and we're gonna buy like three stacks and hope this is enough to get us out of the chapter well i ran out of some nether quartz so i came in here to get some while i was making some tom's simple storage stuff and looky looky what i just found and there we go my very first ancient debris of which I'm probably going to need way too many. So that took a whole lot of adding a bunch of recipes, but now we can make the battery alloy, the ingots, the plates, the curved plates, as well as tin plates and tin wire, which we're going to need to make the redstone battery. But now we can just jam the button and do it. And so close. Now, however, we need to make all of the circuit components, which is just these four pieces. And there's no real tricks. This is all stuff we've already made. Although maybe I don't have gold plates automated. I probably should. One two, three, and no gold plates. I need to go deal with that. You know what? I don't have processing for gold of any sort. I just have raw gold. Uh, I am just going to make these two plates manually and move on with this. And four. You know, it really helps if I remember to pick up all of these items, huh? But there we go. Now we just have to make this analog circuit, which you'll be shocked to know we can do pretty easily. Except I need two more gold plates. I probably should get this set up. All right, and now with that, we can make the basic machine hull. And there we go. We are now into the electrical age, chapter three. And we can get chapter three common reward. We got ingots, great. Oh, I suppose we should just go get all the rest of this stuff too, because maybe it'll be useful. Oh wow, that's a lot of stuff. Diamond lasso's nice. Diamond barrel's nice. The diamond chakram I'm not so sure about, but the bunny hoppers, oh man. Oh man, it loves me so much it gave me not one, but two bunny hoppers because that's what I need given that I already have the slime boots. But at least they're cute. 
Anyhow, I still have a bunch of things to clear out of this chapter that we're going to need, probably most of at some point, and we're gonna to have to go fill all of this in. And most importantly, I'm going to need the scanner, which hopefully will let me find the antimony that I have a depressingly low amount of up there remaining. Yeah, that's gonna become a problem if I don't get to the electric quarry soon or don't find a bunch. Anyhow, if you found this episode interesting and entertaining, please remember to like or subscribe if you're new. As always, I'm Ard. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.